Welcome, gamers, to Basement Arcade Pause Me, the show where we just hit pause, sit back, and just chill. I am your host, Ben Magnet, and today I have an awesome guest for me. Once again, from the land of Australia. Man, I know a lot of people from Australia. Maybe I should move there. Oh, well, maybe once COVID's over. She is a streamer. She is a friend of mine. She actually has helped me a few times with uh, my Old School Gamer Magazine articles here and there. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show, Ali Sai. Ali, how's it going? Hi, it's going good. How are you, Ben? I am doing well. Well, I'm technically off work now, so a little bit uh, inside baseball here um, to the mm. viewers and listeners. It is ten, right as at the time of this recording, it is 2.24 in the morning where I live in Southern California. But for you, Allie, it is 724. 724. In the evening. Mm-hmm. On so, a Saturday. Yeah. Well, it's Saturday morning for me too. So the good news is I don't have to go to work. So I can sleep in. I don't have to worry about that. That's the good part. <laughs> but also if I, if I seem a little quieter because I'm trying to be considerate, I did tell my roommates and my girlfriend that, hey, I'm going to be interviewing someone. I'm going to be talking to them, doing a show mm-hmm. at 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and Working I told my... my partner, I know you're playing Overwatch, but could you try not to rage too hard in case <laughs> if my microphone picks it up? <laughs> yeah. Well, luckily, they're totally fine with it. They understand because time zones are a thing. But mm. I am just so, oh, not flabbergasted. Flabbergasted is the wrong word. I am just, I guess I'm lucky and I'm like, dang, Australia of all countries, Australia. Because I've had a, a guest on from England. I'm going to have another uh, guest on from England soon. But mm. a lot of people, because even while I was talking to my girlfriend about this, about us getting together to do the show, I was like, yeah, I'm going to be interviewing someone from Australia. She's like, what is with you in interviewing people from England, Australia? <laughs> what, what's that? And I'm like, they're the ones who follow me on Twitter. I'm sorry. <laughs> It must be something about, you know, your personality or humor that just appeals to Australians. I'll take it. <laughs> I will bloody take it. I, I that is very up, high on us. <laughs> uh, when I was in, uh, I, I mean, there are times I've even taken some English and Australian vocabulary and it's somehow just integrated into mine. Now, as the, if I had any bloodline to anything, it would probably be England because I mm. think, because I think I have family heritage that comes from the UK. I'm not 100% sure, but I think I'm British or English ancestrally. So I've been ever since I think I found that out. I've been saying bloody as like like there are times something happens like how ah, bloody hell was going on. And, you know, I did America, pick up that you dropped a bloody earlier yeah. on. <laughs> and also, um, I've also been like talking to you guys, talking to, to like you and uh, Todd, the top loader. He was on a few episodes ago, and I'm also listening to another podcast that has an Australian. And every time they refer to college, they call it uni. Uni, yep. So for me, and I don't even start saying, it's like, oh, yeah, when I was in uni, it's like, what do you mean uni? I was like, oh, that's right. I'm, I'm not talking to an Australian. I'm talking to an American. When I was in college. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, let's see. There's a re- Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so, Allie, um, the reason why I asked you to come on the show is because you are a streamer. You're the first streamer. I am. Or or the, per, or the first streamer I've actually had on the show. Um, my first question to you is, what got you into video game streaming? Oh, that's a very good question. Um, I'm not sure is, <laughs> is the answer. Um, when I started streaming, which was at the end of, um, of 2019, I've had a bit of a on and off relationship with streaming Mm -hmm. but um I had never actually watched a live stream before um when I'd done my first stream so Mm -hmm. I was watching a lot of YouTube at the time and I started watching a lot of Sims YouTubers um and a lot of Australian based ones like James Turner Mm -hmm. from Sim Supply and um Mm -hmm. Deligracy and as I got deeper into the rabbit hole of you you know when you discover a new YouTube streamer and you just watch their entire backlog I did that with James Turner and I ended up on his um, just uploads of his VODs from Twitch. Um, Mm -hmm. And I thought, hey, maybe I could do that. You know, I've been a gamer my whole life. Um, I had never really considered streaming before because I thought, you know, maybe I missed the boat on that. I I should have started doing it when I was younger. But um, I really just 
watched enough of the VODs where I was like, I could try to emulate that and see how I go. And I just downloaded OBS, the game I was playing at the time, and just went for it. And I had one one viewer um, <laughs> <laughs> who was a lovely guy. Um, and I just, from that moment on, I went and bought a cam um, immediately after that because I was like, that was great. I loved that. Um, engaging with somebody while I play video games um, because I'm a very social person. I like mm-hmm. doing things with people. Um, and I didn't have a lot of gaming friends when I was growing up, so I was mostly playing games by myself. Oh, yeah. um, and then finding that engagement and finding a community to play games with was really what appealed to me about streaming. That is got to be some of the most wholesome bit like one of the most wholesome stories i've heard in in a good long while because um i completely understand of how like because i see myself as a social person as well um and also just you get that high because i also stream funny enough i stream every once in a blue moon because unfortunately (laughs) my work schedule is vastly well okay it's it's difficult it is very difficult to stream Mm -hmm. i mean we're recording this at 2 30 in the morning for me for crying out loud so for me, finding a time to stream is extremely difficult, but I feel like since I've been doing like this, like not just show this show, but the Mothership Show, Fake Nerd Podcast for a while, just thinking that it's like, hey, there's this one person watching us. That's like the biggest high in the world. Like when I, there are times where I'm like, oh, maybe I'll stream for like two minutes and I just like throw a quick thing on Twitter and no one watches it. Mm it's like it kind of bums me out but at the same time it's like nah it's like there there might could uh, it was like what what time was it four o'clock in the afternoon okay yeah the people are busy exactly let's, let's, try, let's try again a different time i try again a different time maybe two people watch or maybe three if i get lucky but at the same time it's like hey people actually care people exactly are, people watch which is great any even one viewer is someone who you can connect mm-hmm. with and become friends with and then you've got another friend to play games with mm-hmm. and that's awesome yeah, I, I just wish I had money to buy a, a video camera because I don't have one. <laughs> I mean, I want to eventually stream up through my PC. I want to stream mm-hmm. not just through because I the way I stream is through my PlayStation 4. Oh, yeah. So I'm happy that my PS4 can do that. And also because um, everyone else on the Fake Nerd podcast has a PS5 besides me. I'm the one person who doesn't have one yet. Yeah. And yep. it says like because we because we're. Um, at the time of his recording, we're also recording for Mortal Com- We're recording Mortal Kombat. We're doing stuff because we're going through all the Mortal Kombat, or not all the Mortal Kombat games, the newer ones. And we're on Mortal Kombat 10. So, and I was talking to guys, and they're like, man, just recording this through the PS5 is so easy. It is, I mean, Ryan, um, he streams on Twitch, and he is he's able to use his green screen, he has a camera. It, to him, it's like the, it's the easiest thing in the world. I'm like, well, if they can do it, why can't I do it? You can do it. Oh, I most certainly can, except I don't have the, the proper equipment yet. But equipment aside, um, mm. you said you've been gaming your whole life. What was the first game you remember playing that you know is like, this is it? This is, this is something I'm going to love for the rest of my life. <laughs> well, the first games I ever played... Mm. I installed with a good old set of floppy disks. Um, and those games were... Oh, be still my heart. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, remember, I remember those too. Uh, I remember... Oh, man. That, yeah, that, yeah. So the kids' who... games that I played were... Um, the one that I remember the most fondly was called Fatty Bear's Birthday Surprise. Okay. <laughs> um, and that was about... You're a bear that has come to life for a little girl and you set up a surprise birthday party for her. Uh-huh. Um, and then following that was uh, Putt-Putt, so the little mm-hmm. green, uh, green purple car. Oh, I remember <laughs> him. I had, yep. a, I had um, a Putt-Putt game when I was growing up. Yep, and Pajama Sam, Freddy Fish, all those kinds of games. Don't think um, I did any Pajama Sam. I can't remember. Okay. Maybe look it up and you might it might spark Pro- a memory for you. Probably. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I remember because I a while ago I, I wrote an article for Old School Gamer about um the edutainment games that a lot that were a big boom in the er, in the early nineties. Yeah, I played a lot of those. I think I think it was called 
it was something rabbit read a rabbit i played mm -hmm. a lot of educational games mm -hmm. yeah because because i don't know if it was the same thing over in australia because here in the united states one of the big ones that um a lot of schools got a hold of was jumpstart for kids and it was separated by a different grade like you have jumpstart first grade or kindergarten first grade second grade and so on and so forth so did you guys have that in australia or or no not that i recall okay yeah because it because obviously the edutainment games they say it's like yeah this is for third grade then you get there and you're getting fourth grade questions because of course our education system wasn't the same compared to like not even just from like from school to school is totally different mm -hmm. so what some kid may learn in third grade another one may learn in second or fourth right yeah it yeah it was just a whole cluster shag but anyways uh back so playing those only on a on an old pc that man that is mm. awesome yeah so i actually have very fun memories of booting games up from dos which a lot of people my age don't have but i mm -hmm. came from a family of gamers so my dad was really into gaming mm -hmm. um and my mum, to a lesser extent, as well. She loved, she loves the game Lemmings. Um, oh, I've heard. I, I remember I've heard. her playing of Le Lemmings a lot, and she played a lot of Zelda games Ooh. growing up as well. So, one of my fondest memories of gaming was um, on the Dreamcast, actually, um, and it was a four-player game called Gauntlet. Okay. <laughs> and my dad, my mum, my brother, and I would play four-player. And that was sort of like my first experience of co-op gaming um, with my family. And that's just a really, really fun memory of mine. Man, that is awesome. I remember <laughs> when we got our, the first console I ever had in my house was the, was the OG PlayStation. I still have it. It's in there. Um, and of course, it only had two controller ports. We never bought a multi-tap. But I remember one night my dad and I would play a game called Three Extreme, which is an extreme racing game where you, when, an extreme sports racing game where you're, you, it's you and another player, you're racing down a hill, and along the way you can also do tricks. Uh, first one wins, but also you can even get more bragging rights by saying you had the highest score. Mm. And there was one night I remember very vividly where my mom and my brother, they go to bed, and my dad and I are just up for like maybe two, two and a half hours later. <laughs> We're just going at it. We're just playing back and forth. I would win. He would win. It was, <laughs> it was a good night. Mm. So when you say that your parents were also gamers, it kind of makes me a little bit envious because my, my family was not anti-video games, but they were kind of strict when it came to video games. Like when I was mm. younger, um, I don't know if you ever had this, but we were allowed to play video games only when our, all of our homework was done. Like we had to prove to our parents that our homework was done. We couldn't like, like throw that last little math assignment under the rug and just, or like behind the book and just be like, yeah, see, it, it's done. And then once everyone goes to bed, you're like in bed and scribbling hard. <laughs> um, like we had to prove it was done, but also we can only play for an hour. Oh wow! Yeah. I'd have to say I had the exact opposite experience with um with parenting and video games. Mm -hmm. um my video game experience was not really at all monitored because mm -hmm. after that phase of you know the edutainment games and those kind of things one of the first games I remember playing was Leisure Suit Larry um so <laughs> I would have been maybe seven or eight when I played Leisure Suit Larry for the first time wow um, <laughs> and it's actually the first game that I remember looking up a walkthrough for and following oh. a walkthrough to to finish the game and um i started using that walkthrough maybe i want to say a quarter into the game mm -hmm. and that era of video gaming was quite unforgiving because oh. i did not pick up and i remember this very specifically i did not pick up a marker at the very start of the game so all the way through almost to the end of the game, I could not complete it because I had not done that at the very start. And you couldn't go back to where the marker was and pick it up, could you? Couldn't go back. Oh, now, I that, didn't have the stage. I would have had to start again. That, wow. I mean, because I've, the, the games I, I did play when I was growing up now, I didn't, I think the first time I ever looked up a walkthrough 
like on the internet because I my parents bought me strategy guides. But of mm. course, I didn't know they were strategy guides. Like the first strategy guide I ever owned was a strategy guide for Pokemon Red and Blue. But I mean, I could read when I got the game, but I was just more enamored with the pictures, with the colors, like yeah. look at all the shapes and colors. <laughs> Like the first time I actually looked up a, a walkthrough online was for Mega Man Legends 2. Um, in that game, you need to find a giant gear because so the way that game is, it's a it's different from a traditional Mega Man game where you go through a level, you beat the boss, you get the weapon. Mega Man Legends and Legends 2, also known as my favorite Mega Man games of all time, they are action adventure RPGs where you actually go in a three dimensional space, you get to go explore. And you're in this one room, but to complete, to advance the story, you need a specific weapon, which is the drill arm, because there's this big giant wall, you can only get through it with the drill arm. But to get the drill arm, you need this one specific part. I spent hours trying to find the stupid part. <laughs> and when I was playing Mega Man Legends, I told myself, I'm not going to look up cheat codes, I'm not going to look up, I'm going to play this game the way I'm going to play it. Nearly 40 hours go by... <laughs> of me playing this game, trying every avenue I could, thinking maybe the parts here, maybe the parts there, trying, like, I'm, it's like, I'm like Charlie Day, and I'm like, with, with the whiteboards and the string theory going crazy <laughs> from all these sunny Philadelphia, trying to figure out how to get this damn part, and you want to know where it was when I finally caved and looked it up? Where was it? It was in the one box I didn't look at in the very beginning of the game. The yeah, one, I hate to say it. <laughs> the one box. And I even went through the entire game that was open to me, going checking every box. It was in the one box. Mm -hmm. I did not look. And when I finally got the part completed the game, I was just like, <laughs> I felt like an idiot because I was like checking every single nook and cranny, but the one place I didn't check. Yeah. There was. And you never missed a box again because you never learned your lesson. Box. <laughs> Never mix the box again. Um, I was in Florida. Um, my brother, because he has a PlayStation Five, he was showing me and my girlfriend Astro's Playroom, which is the tech demo that that came with the system. And I'm actually going taking paths that he never did. Like I'm finding because in that game you can find a little PlayStation art. They call them artifacts, but they're just little like, hey, this is what. Um, this is like, hey, here's the multi tap from the PS One, or hey, here's the here's the first PlayStation camera that you can get for the PS2. Pretty much all the accessories that came with the system when the system was, during the system's life. And my brother is watching me play this game. He's like, dude, I never would have thought to go that way. He's like, you gotta go places you never think you should go, dude. Mm -hmm. I mean, the only way you know, it's like, oh, there's a wall, I can't go through there. But when you can, it's like, aha, I can go through there. <laughs> yeah, when I, um, when I play games now, um, I actually struggle a lot playing JRPGs because mm -hmm. I cannot leave an area unexplored. Mm -hmm. I have to, if there's a split path, I have to go that way and I have to see how far it gets, whether I think it's the right path or not. And I have to go back and check every nook and cranny of mm -hmm. every hallway of every tunnel um, until I find everything or else it's just, and I'm not a completionist gamer either. I just, I guess you would call it FOMO. Like, I just, I don't want to miss out on anything. I yeah. fear missing out. Oh, no, I, I completely understand what you're going through. Um, when I was playing uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 and Final Fantasy 7 Remake, mm. I was checking as, I mean, I wasn't checking everything because in Kingdom Hearts 3, there's these little hidden, they call them the lucky emblems, but they're just hidden Mickeys. You get yeah. all the hidden Mickeys and then you get a piece to help make the most powerful weapon in the game. But when I was in, um, so I got to like, as far as I could to the final boss. And then I went back and just double checked and looked up and was like, okay, I'm going to go find everything, get the weapon. Cool. I'm a super OP to kill the boss now. Great. Yeah. Whereas with Final Fantasy seven remake, I made damn sure <laughs> I beat every side quest that was open to me mm -hmm. before I advanced the story. Like I'm in a new spot. I'm like, cool. I'm gonna get my side quest done. Okay. Side quests are done. Cool. Let's go do the main story. I think it might also be a symptom of me just having a very type A personality. So when mm -hmm. I've got a quest list, you know, even in my work life, in my personal life, I like writing lists and I like crossing things off. So I will, if I've just completed a task, I will write it down just so I can cross it off. So when I've got a quest list, you bet I am going 
down that list and finishing every single quest before I move on to the next area. Oh yeah, I was for, for me when I was playing Final Fantasy VII Remake and even Final Fantasy XV because there that is also a game that has an extensive list of side quests. My whole thing is like I want to get these side quests done because a I'll be super powerful and b some of the best weapons and the best gear in the game you can only mm. get through the side quests and the and the special hidden dungeons. So as the game may want you, it's like, hey, you should go right. It's like, no, no, no. I'm going to go left first. Get all that good shit. Then go to the right. Mm. And where, so where do you stand on law? Because before I started streaming, mm -hmm. um, when you get sort of like notes or things to read in games, I would never read them. No, I was never <laughs> interested in them. But once I started streaming... Um, I don't know, for some reason when I pick them up, I I think it's because I tend to play games that I missed playing um, mm -hmm. when they came out, but they, they're people's favorite games. Right. So when they're watching me, I feel bad for skipping all the lore that, you know, people um, have learned so much about over the years because, you know, it's their favorite game and they want to know everything about it. So I've started reading those and reading them out loud on my stream and I've found you know that i kind of regret skipping that kind of thing before because they do make the game so much richer in a way and you do kind of get those aha moments when you put things together yeah. before the game tells you i think for my stance on lore i feel you know what i think i go into the exact same thing you are so besides basement arcade pause menu we also have another show which is our let's play show which is just called basement arcade and in the before times, you know, before the pandemic hit, yeah. <laughs> um, there are some really good Halloween episodes of myself and my co-hosts, Brian and Sparks, where I'm playing games like Evil Within, um, mm -hmm. Resident Evil 7. Uh, let's see. Um, no, it wasn't Subnautica. It was another ocean one that was scary as all hell. But as I'm playing like games like Evil Within and Resident Evil 7, I'm actually looking at the lore I'm talking about it. Whereas there are times where, like, I remember when I first played Kingdom Hearts and I got the Anson reports. I didn't care. I didn't, the yeah. first time I played the game, I didn't bother with them. It wasn't until my second or third playthrough, I actually read everything. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so when I, like, he was talking about like the Machine of Darkness, like, why some of the Heartless have, like, why the Heartless have, like, that emblem, because he created them. That's like, they came from a machine, and the natural Heartless just, they don't have any markings on them at all. So, like, I'm thinking, I'm like playing this, I'm reading the, all this lore and this info. I'm like, holy shit. That boss fight I just got into like 20 minutes ago makes so much more sense now. It changes the game in a way. It and does. it's funny it you does. mention <laughs> Resident Evil 7 and The Evil Within because those are the two exact games that I was thinking of when I brought <laughs> up that point. Um, and also what I'm playing at the moment, Outlast. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Part of the reason why I stopped to read all of those files and documents is so that I get a break yeah. <laughs> from how scary the game is because I know when I'm in that menu, I'm safe. Yeah, you're, you're safe. Uh, let's, yeah, let's talk about spooky games. So I've watched your Evil Within stream mm -hmm. and it made me laugh because I think I also sent you the video when I played it. That's also up yeah. on our YouTube channel. So if anyone watching this wants to go watch that, um, go ahead. It's still up um because the way when you're going through it i'm thinking hey are you at this part yet and you're like what do you mean i'm like oh you'll find out <laughs> just wait that's one of the beautiful things about streaming um mm -hmm. is playing those games as i said that people people have already experienced and then when you get to see somebody else experience it for the first time um that's quite a connection really yeah. and even when i finished evil within when I finished my playthrough, the first thing I did was try and go find other people who were playing it for the first time mm -hmm. so that I could have that experience of like, oh, you don't know what's coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you did, Um, you actually finished the evil, the game you were within. We only played up to, I want to say chapter four, maybe three or chapter four. I want to say mm. chapter three is where we stopped. Because, I mean, unfortunately, schedules are, aren't the best. So we had to get these It's things a long fast. game. It is, a, it is a long game. I, same with Resident Evil 7. We only played like the first two hours of the game, up to the first boss fight. Yeah. We got up to the first boss fight, and then we called it there. Alien Isolation, that's the other game I played. 
Another Which, game uh, I've played on stream. <laughs> so I, I need to ask, why all the spooky games? Well, I am not a spooky lover. Mm-hmm. I don't watch horror movies and I yeah. never have. So people are horrified when I say I haven't seen Alien Ooh. and I haven't seen all of your other favorite horror movies. Ooh, yeah. um, Alien's really good. I know I have been told I need to watch Alien and after playing the game I think I can handle it okay (laughs) but I started actually Alien Isolation was the first horror game that I ever played okay um and I think it was just I'd started streaming Sims games and um Planet Zoo so a lot of simulation games um but I was looking for something a bit more story driven and I miss playing a lot of these games because they didn't have a social aspect for me. So, you know, the single player games, you know, you can't play with your friends um, and all that. So I thought what a good place to start is this whole genre of games that I haven't experienced and I can experience them for the first time with my viewers. Um, and that's what got me into them. And also the pressure of having people watch me is what <laughs> motivates me actually finish them because if no one was watching me i would quit in the first 10 seconds it would be too mm-hmm. scary for me like this because i remember i was watching your outlast stream when i was finishing up or just getting all my twitter tags for a recent article i had and mm-hmm. as i was listening to you because the way you have your stream set up i, was, I think it's really cool um you have like these uh bits that people can buy and they could just like throw random sounds into yeah. your stream like the jump scare because i remember um i was i had this your stream up it was on a different tab so i could still hear it but i'm like ty- typing away trying to tag all the people that we know on twitter and stuff like mm-hmm. that and all of a sudden i hear ah! like, <laughs> giant scream and then you scream up and i i even jump up i'm like what the fuck was that and i look over it's like oh it was so and so doing the the thing Yep, the thing. As if scary games aren't scary enough, I give my viewers the opportunity to scare me even more. Um, But a lot of people do say that my screams are scarier than the (laughs) game. I I would definitely say there are times I had to, like, make sure that I had to adjust the volume on my laptop because I was like, was that too loud or was that not loud enough? I should have a sound warning on my streams for sure. You you definitely get, I mean, well, you're playing a spooky game, so of course it's, I also feel that spooky games, because um, now I don't, unfortunately, I don't watch Twitch on a regular. As much as I would love to, mm. there's so many other things that I that require my attention that unfortunately Twitch is at the bottom of the of the of the list. But yeah. when my because um, I'm sorry to say you're not the only Twitch streamer I follow. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, when how I dare still, you? <laughs> I mean, when I notice that you're on stream or when I notice that another friend of mine is on stream or someone I know through Twitter, Instagram is on stream, I do try to watch as much as I can, a little bit of them. And um, the the times that I, I have watched, uh, I feel like the ones that get a lot of the intention are the spooky ones, the ones that are mm. scary, the ones that have people go, oh my God. Um, <laughs> what was it? It's like Five Nights at Freddy's all over again. Mm. Have you ever played Five Nights at Freddy's or no? I haven't. Um, I totally missed the boat on Five Nights at Freddy's. Um, like but it is like, a very popular game. I feel like that was the first one. Or not, okay, it wasn't the first one, but it was the one that made a bunch of streamers, I don't want to say popular, but it definitely put streaming on a map because people will be playing this, mm. this game and all of a sudden Five Nights at Freddy's is a huge franchise. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so besides the spooky games, because I know you have other games that you like to play, I was actually part of one once. Yeah. Um, Mario Kart 8. So you and I played Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on stream, and I'm glad to say that I did not make a complete ass of myself. I at least won <laughs> two rounds. Um, so, but, so what do you play games with your Discord, with your friends on Discord or even friends around the world? Mm. um how do you pick those games it's like you know what's a really fun multiplayer game that everyone could just get together and who also and also who has it yeah well i think uh nintendo games are Mm -hmm. sort of universally adored Mm -hmm. (laughs) and the mario games you know a lot of people have a switch it's quite like a low barrier entry into video games um and 
Mario Kart, for example, is one of those ones that's quite easy to jump in and out of. Um, mm-hmm. So you're really only committed to be there for the race that you're in. And then you can yeah. leave or you can join in the next race. And um, it's quite relaxed like that, which I really like. And um, yeah. I don't know. When you said, hey, let's go 200 cc on the very first race, I was like, <laughs> what, are you do- what are you doing? <laughs> I regretted that <clears throat> almost immediately after mm-hmm. I said that. I am because I've never done 200 cc's before in my life. Like when I first got Mario Kart 8 and and introduced 200 cc's, I'm like, no, (laughs) I'm not touching that. But I did um, it purely to get the stars for the 200 mm -hmm. cc, and then I never played that again. It's too stressful for me. (laughs) Oh, I, I, it's hard for me to get the stars, even the 100 cc's. I'm like, "Mm, no, I'll just get the trophies. (laughs) I got the gold. That's all I need. I don't care. Mm-hmm. But um, what other games have you played for you? Was, is it, has it only been Mario Kart so far? Because I know um, I'm kind of, I feel like I'm a little late to the party when it comes to going in your streams and watching people and watching people stream. Um, but what other games have you played on your Discord server? Yeah, um, on my recent, I did a 12 hour stream for the first time for my birthday mm-hmm. um, earlier this Happy month. Happy birthday, by the way. Thank you. Um, we played a lot of Jackbox games. Okay. Which they've been around for a while, mm-hmm. um, but still just a really fun way to engage with a bunch of people and have some really good laughs with the Jackbox games. It does tend to attract, you know, a certain crowd as certain games do um, mm-hmm. on Twitch. But yeah, those are a great time. Have you ever played them? Oh, yeah. I've um, The Jackbox games have definitely been a hit at some parties I've gone to. <laughs> yeah, they've definitely, it's like, when it's just even if it's a small family gathering or mm-hmm. when I'm in a in a group with a bunch of people and it's yeah. like, hey, who has a phone? Cool, we're gonna play a jackbox game. We're playing like a the doodle one. I forgot what it is. It is a doodle one? No. Drawful? Yeah, that one. That's yeah. it. Drawful. Oh man. i I remember playing Drawful on at Christmas one year for at least like an hour and a half to two hours. We were waiting for our food to get ready. And we just played Drawful for two hours, and it was awesome. It was just me, my brother, my mom, and my girlfriend. Yeah. And yeah, they, they are. They're great little games, um, especially because, again, it's that, like, low barrier to entries. All you need yeah. is a phone and one mm-hmm. person to have the game, and then you have this, like, awesome, you know, group activity that you can do. Yeah. So obviously you're playing a whole lot of spooky games right now, or especially um, Outlast because you're – the, um, your Twitch viewers said, "Hey, let's scare the crap out of Ali even more." Um, yeah, <laughs> but I can only assume there are games on your docket that you really want to play for your stream that you just haven't gotten to yet. Like everyone, like all of us, we have the dreaded backlog. What mm. games, like the the star games on your backlog that you just look at, they be like, "I'm gonna get to that on my stream someday." Not now, but soon. What what are those games? I'm curious. I don't actually know that I have a lot of stream backlog games. Um, streaming for me, I do really, really enjoy playing the one-player story-driven games. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, that's kind of the sweet spot for streaming because I have something to react to and engage with along with the chat. Um, but I have a huge backlog of games that I want to play off stream, <laughs> <laughs> which is very troubling because I love streaming. And I love playing other games off stream, um, but I don't have a lot of time to do both. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely hear you on that part. Um, so let, let me rephrase the question. If there were say three games that you would love to play on a stream, if you can think of three games, if you can't, don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. What would those games be? I think just more horror games. Okay. I want to, I want to get through and not even just horror games, just those games that have a really, really good single player experience mm. that people have already played through and they love they love the story and they love the lore and they love the mechanics. So they just enjoy um, seeing those games again. So I want to continue with The Evil Within. I want to play mm-hmm. The Evil Within 2. Um, what else is there? I think there's there's lots of games that people just love and they they want to see me experience it for the first time 
because that's how they, you know, share their experience with that. So I think I've had Call of Cthulhu mentioned okay. a few times. Um, Subnautica. Really, it's it's all scary games. <laughs> that's the other one I played. That's the other one. It was uh, it was Subnautica. Subnautica. Yeah. yeah, that was that was super glitchy too when when I played it. Oh, was it? it? Oh yeah. Um. So there's this part I'm like going through the oh, or maybe it wasn't Subnautica. Maybe. You're in a like submarine under. No, no, underwater? it wasn't. Sub, it, it wasn't Subnautica. I was underwater. That's for sure. Um. Shoot. You know what? I'll figure it out later. I'm sorry. <laughs> I am totally sorry because I was like, was it Subnautica? Was it not Subnautica? I just remember I was underwater and we ended the stream because I clipped through the floor. And I was going oh. into an endless abyss of nothingness. Oh, no. The only color around me was just like the gray slash bluish scale of the ocean surrounding mm. me. As I'm continuously falling through an infinite void of just nothing. And I'm like, I guess this is how I die. <laughs> <laughs> Horrifying in its own right. Yeah, you you yeah. don't die through an enemy or through a game mechanic. You die because you fell through a, you fell into <laughs> a glitch. All right, so horror games. That's all. That is totally awesome because I know um, a game I definitely because right now I've just been streaming a whole lot of Fortnite because that's on my PS4. Mm. It's easy for me to play. It's I've been playing with uh, my friend Cindy Jacks. She was uh, also a guest on the show because I got her into that, which is really cool. Um, but the one game I'm definitely waiting to stream it that I found out is gonna be for free on PlayStation Plus is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater One and Two. Oh, awesome! Yeah, that yeah. was announced as the September um, the free one of the free games for September, and um, because I've been wanting that game for a while, I don't know why I haven't gotten it yet. I just been like, I'm gonna get it someday, and then it's like, hey, you get it for free. I'm like, yoink! Mm -hmm. So once once that comes out, definitely keep an eye on my Twitch. So yeah, uh, yeah. So earlier, um, right before we started recording this, you mentioned that you are a retro gamer. I am yes. also. A, I, am, <laughs> I am sorry. I am also a retro gamer. So my question to you is: What retro games or um, what what retro systems do you love playing the most, and which systems have you always wanted just never got? Um, I think for me, retro gaming is more of a comfort kind of call back to my childhood. So I'll always go back to those, um, and mostly Nintendo 64 games, mm -hmm. um, that, you know, I played when I was you know, in early, early primary school, or I think you call mm -hmm. it elementary school. Um, um, so yeah, we call it elementary school, but there was definitely like a, a part where it's like, this is the primary and this is the, the upper grades. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So our American, the American education system is weird. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll definitely go back to all of my N64 games and I still have the full collection that my brother and I grew up with. Um, and yeah, as I said, like it's, it's very much like a comfort thing for me, um, bringing me back to my childhood and, you know, all the, the, um, the music and the sound effects and, from those kind of games that are so iconic, like Super Mario 64, um, mm -hmm. which I go back to quite regularly. <laughs> you know what? I got something to tell you. Um, I just recently beat Super Mario 64 for the first time in my life. Oh, wow. And, yeah, I got all 120 stars. I made sure I did that. And because when I got an N64, I didn't get an N64 for Mario. I got it so I could play Pokemon Stadium. Oh, my gosh. Pokemon Stadium. Yeah. Yeah, it was for, uh, I mean, I've told the story. I feel like every time someone's on the show and they mention the N64 and they're like, they say, they mention N64, Super Mario, and they're like, yeah, you played. I'm like, I never owned Mario 64 growing up. They're like, what do you mean? It's like, I, I wanted Pokemon, dude. Pokemon Stadium, I would say, is one of my most played games on the 64. Oh, yeah, that was like my go-to on the N64. Mm. But the reason why I mentioned Mario, and I've written about it recently on OSG, is that I don't think I'll be going back to Mario 64 for a, a very good long time because while I did enjoy the game, I had quite a few problems with it. Mo Such mostly, as? <laughs> mostly the camera. Um, mm. The camera being the biggest flaw. Now, I get it. 
when I play retro games, being the age I am now, especially retro games I've never played before, the next big retro game I'm playing to tackle is Super Metroid because I'm trying to go through all the Metroid games before Dread comes out in October. Mm. And when I play these old older games, I try to get myself in the mindset of I'm back in 1996 or yeah. I'm back in that era. But as I play it, I feel like I've also been spoiled on experience because the first 3D Mario game I actually played and beat is Mario Odyssey. And that's like leaps and bounds. Oh, yeah. That's like not even fair of a comparison. (laughs) So that's like trying to compare uh, cricket to baseball. It's like it's not the same thing. There's no way it can be the same thing. (laughs) So playing Mario 64, I definitely I didn't rage quit. But I definitely was mad that I missed a jump. I couldn't see where I was going. And the camera was just so finicky that I was like, I'm mm. trying to go, I'm trying to make Mario look one way so I can line my jump up. And then I think, okay, maybe this is it. And I go, and then it's like I'm I'm like a bunch of um I'm like com- I completely missed it. So I mean, so probably I won't be coming back to that game for a good long while. Need to give give it a rest. (laughs) Well, there also it was a game where I played, and as I got frustrated with certain parts, I just put down, and I started Mm -hmm. playing other games instead. That to me is the big thing, because I've unfortunately done that. Uh, Near Automata, which is the big JRPG I've been playing for the past like three years, (laughs) (laughs) amazing game. It's just, and also I'm going through my whole trying to finish as many side quests as I possibly can, and then complete, and then go through the main story. And then there it's like, hey, you could do this side quest. I'm like, well, can I do this side quest now? It's like, well, you can, but you shouldn't. <laughs> like, what do you mean I shouldn't? It's like, oh, you'll find out. And then it's like, oh, to, for me to complete this side quest, I have to go into an area I haven't even unlocked yet. It's like, ah, great. Thanks, game. Now I have to go do other stuff. So I am um, a serial incompletionist. Um, mm-hmm. So I very, very rarely finish games. Actually, I think streaming is the is the push that i need to get to the end of games Mm -hmm. but um i as you said it realized that i have never actually finished super mario 64 (laughs) no and never never got to the end i've actually never finished a zelda game which i am so ashamed of i know (laughs) i would say you know what don't feel ashamed because so my favorite video game series is Sonic the Hedgehog. Mm-hmm. The first Sonic game I ever beat was Sonic Adventure 2. And I've been playing the 2D games my entire life. The only game I ever got close to when I was a younger was a little kid was playing the Mario CD port on my old Windows 95. But I owe it because like I got to the point where I could get to the very end of the last level. It was Metallic Madness. Act two, because in that game they had three acts to a level or to a zone, as they call them. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, I just could not beat that level. I could not get past it. I would be, I actually ran up the time a few times while I'd be playing it. I can get all the way to the end of the damn game, but I just could not figure out where to go to beat the level. I eventually did figure it out, thankfully, but it took me well over 20 years to beat my favorite game of all time. Yeah, I can definitely relate to that. <laughs> so like, the way you say you've never beat a Zelda game before, I can't get mad at because it took me 20 years to beat Sonic the Hedgehog 2. It took me well over 20 years to finally play and beat Mario 64. And even when I was playing Mario 64, I was constantly picking up and putting it back down again. And that's the mm-hmm. only game where I forced myself. Like I knew I had enough stars to go and fight Bowser in the last bit. But I'm like, nope, I got to get all 120 stars because I wanted to see Yoshi at the top of the castle, and I just <laughs> wanted to be able to say, I did that. I got all 120 stars, and now I never have to do it again. <laughs> yeah, see, I can confidently say that my favorite Zelda game of all time is Ocarina of Time, um, but I've never finished it. The closest I've gotten to finishing a Zelda game was um, Breath of the Wild, and I stopped mm-hmm. right before the final fight with Ganondorf and just really? never gone back. Re- wow. Now that's a game I couldn't. You couldn't get me to put down. Was a uh, breath. I of definitely Wild. played a lot of it, mm-hmm. um, but once I got to the the that point in the story, I just stopped, and I can't tell you why. But 
you know, maybe this is the push I need to go back to it. <laughs> well, actually, I can completely relate because that's what happened to me in Majora's Mask. So um, the way I played Ocarina and Majora's Mask is because they were both re-released for the 3DS for, you know, as Ocarina Time 3D and Majora's Mask 3D. Mm-hmm. I bought my 3DS solely to play Ocarina because at that time I, ne- I didn't have my N64 anymore. My N64 was lost, which really freaking sucks. And um, once again, a bunch of my older or my retro gaming friends would tell me, "Is like you have to play Ocarina." And the lists, like, like the top ten games you need to play before you die, they would always put Ocarina Time as either like number one or number two. Mm-hmm. Like it's always in the top ten or the top five. So being able to finally play Ocarina was like, oh wow! Now I could see like, yes, yeah, this game is amazing. This game is gorgeous. The music, like, when you get to the end of the game, not to spoil it for you because you haven't played it and beaten it yet, <laughs> it's like the feels. It's like. I, I did something mm. and with majora's mask i literally have gotten to the very end of the game and i can't tell you why it's just like you and breath of the wild i just put it down it's not that i don't like it i absolutely love playing majora's mask it's different it's weird it's yeah it's very dark <laughs> but i just haven't gotten myself to go back and finish it and there are times I'm like, I moved even. I moved twice ever since I got the game. And now I'm like, oh, yeah. uh, as I'm packing it away to move to my new house, I'm like, oh, yeah, I should really play this again. And I just don't think of it. It's just completely, like, gone. I really, really enjoyed the re-releases of those games, even though mm-hmm. on the re-release I still didn't finish them. Um, yeah. I know, you know, some people have very strong feelings about, you know, re-releases and remasters, but I actually really enjoy them. Oh, me too. I'm the way I see it. If I can get a re-release and as long as it's like essentially the same game, if it has Mm. updated visuals, I'm not going to be mad about it because quality of life improvements. Exactly. (laughs) Um, And also I know it's going to work on my, on my system. Mm. Cause um, one time I was with one of my best friends and if you ever come out to, uh, to California, let me know. and I'll take you to this place. It's really cool. Um, we go to this collectible show here uh, in SoCal called Frankenstein's. And it's like, essentially, it's a nerd, nerd swap meet. You got video game sellers, comic book sellers, um, random collectible sellers, sports people, the whole nine yards. If it's collectible, you can probably buy it there. Awesome. I mean, it is like, it, it's a place you go to spend money. Like your bank, your you like you your bank account will cry once you leave, but we go there and I find a guy selling Pokemon Snap on the N sixty four. So I buy it for my buddy for his birthday. We get home and we try to test it out, and we notice one of the pins on the cartridge is missing. And it turns out the game won't load. Oh no! So. I paid money for this game that's messed up. Luckily, we go back. Luckily, the next um, time it, the, the Frankenstein's was open, we go and we bring it. It's like, yo, this game doesn't work. And they're like, oh, yeah, sure it does. They plug it in and like, oh, shit, you're right. <laughs> and then they look at the cartridge like, oh, yeah, we're missing a pin. And they somehow completely missed it. So luckily, they were able to give us money back. But mm-hmm. um, at the same time, like new Pokemon Snap. It's not a remaster, of course, but... It's a still a newer version of the game, which mm. has a bunch of quality of life improvements. So of course, the visuals look so much better than the original one did. And yeah. there's obviously a lot more Pokemon. Because we did find a working version of the original Pokemon Snap. We mm. played it, and myself, my girlfriend, and another friend of mine, we beat that game in less than three hours. And I mean completely beat it. Yeah, <laughs> every single Pokemon. I think that was like one of the first, of like one of the very few games I've ever hundred percent completed, and I wasn't even trying to hundred percent complete it. But we did it. Yeah, yeah, that was one of one of my favorite games on the Nintendo sixty four as well. But I think mm-hmm. I lacked the awareness when I played it as a kid to know whether I had completed it or not. But when they announced the new Pokemon Snap, oh my gosh. I just went, I went crazy. <laughs> when they announced the new Pokemon Snap, because I remember, I think since the Wii or the Wii U, people were asking for a new Pokemon Snap. Mm. It was definitely being talked about that it's like, oh, we need a new Pokemon Snap. Where's the new yeah. Pokemon Snap? I mean, of course, other Pokemon games would come out 
And some people were like, hey, where's the new Pokemon Snap? And the second it came, was announced on Switch, I remember my, my Twitter and a whole bunch of my friends who did who played the, the original game mm. exploded. Yeah. It um it was definitely around the Wii U era because using that gamepad, everyone oh, yeah. thought, you know, this is the perfect mm-hmm. the perfect camera experience. And I still I would have liked to see how that eventuated on the Wii mm-hmm. U. Um, but to have it on on the Switch and you know, the experience is very much the same kind of experience as the as the 64 in a really comforting and fun way for me at least oh no it i it totally is um it's my girlfriend's favorite game to play right now um <laughs> i cannot tell you how many times i've come home from work or i'm do or i'm out here in my loft recording the show writing articles or just getting my general work done and then she comes out of the room and she's like i'm gonna play pokemon snap for a little bit before bed <laughs> and then i go to bed myself and then there's the switch on my side of the bed and she's dead asleep i'm like okay you gotta put this back in the dock <laughs> The one thing about that game is that the tune that you use to get the Pokemon's attention mm-hmm. is the same tune every time. And yeah. I am so tired of hearing that same noise. <laughs> uh, yeah, I completely understand. Although, fun fact, the voice actor for Professor Mir, I interviewed him uh, a few years ago for the main show it's a special his name is ben lepley and the reason why i interviewed him is because i met him at a convention in here in southern california because he's the voice of dedu in fire Emblem three houses and you can't you probably can't see him but that's pull the link with the camera up. yeah yeah there it is yeah that's his character it's hard for that's him awesome to yeah, but he signed it, and then he, once the game came out, he, it, it was announced that he was the voice of Professor Mirror. So I'm like, yeah, go Ben! <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah, we we totally talked about we talked about Fire Emblem a lot, but that was mm. but still. And now looking back on it, because the convention I met him at was held in January of 2020. <laughs> right, right in the before, before times. Right before it was. If you were to go, if I were to go back in time to me, and you can even find pictures of me at this convention on my Instagram, like I'm, I was dressed as a black mage from Final Fantasy One. If you were to go, if I were to go back, me walking through the parking lot with my staff and everything is like, yo, this is the last convention you're gonna go to for a very long while. I would have called you a liar. Mm. But now, just thinking back on that, it's like, damn, that is just just the way that things have gone have happened since the beginning of 2000 of 2020 is just like sometimes it's sometimes for a lot of people it's gone downhill but for some people it's gone uphill and it's it's weird to see how this pandemic has affected all of us yeah well i as i mentioned earlier started Mm -hmm. streaming in december 2019 um and i only streamed for maybe two weeks and then i stopped for a few months and then i streamed again for a month and then stopped for over a year but it was um, this current lockdown, really, where I started streaming properly. And I was I'm very fortunate to keep my job and mm-hmm. to be able to work from home um, throughout this lockdown. But it gave me the time to actually start streaming properly yeah. and to find, you know, my community on Twitch that has kept me motivated to keep going. So I would say, you know, I'm definitely one of the lucky ones. In, yeah, um, was, in this situation so now the news we get here in the united states is ve- of course vastly different from the rest of the world but we do get little snippets from here and there from countries that have been dealing with the pandemic outside um i want to say it was australia and new zealand maybe back in around i want to say september maybe november of, of last year of 2020 where cases were going down and things were getting better and then mandates were getting lifted so you were street. So, how did that affect your streaming back when things were getting better, and now, unfortunately, you're in, diff- in uh, lockdown? Are you, mm. are is it like a, maybe a blessing in disguise? It's like, well, it sucks. I'm stuck indoors, but at least I get to stream more often. Or is it like, no, I want to. I had my set schedule. I want to go back to that. Um, it's a it's a little bit of both. So I wasn't, I wasn't really streaming 
throughout the whole period where, you know, we had mm-hmm. zero cases and life pretty much went sort of as back to normal as it could have been without mm-hmm. travel or anything. So, yeah, I didn't, I found it difficult to find the time to get into a set schedule mm-hmm. with streaming um, because, you know, I never really knew when I'm going to have to work late and cancel a stream or if I was going to have plans, you know, with friends and not be able to stream. Um uh, the the first lockdown sort of back in March, March mm-hmm. 2020, um, I started streaming, but um, I was going through quite a difficult time personally. So um, I ended an engagement with my ex and then we went into oh. lockdown the next the next day. Um, and I was, that was not the thing I was expecting. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah. And I, I was streaming at that time and my ex was very supportive of me streaming but didn't actually watch my streams Mm -hmm. and um sort of didn't like my streaming personality um and so I was very demotivated to stream after that for a good long time um and then when this lockdown hit I was like you know I really enjoyed that you know I I had been affiliated on Twitch Um, Mm -hmm. the first time that I started streaming. So I was like, you know, there are people who wanted to watch me. I enjoyed doing it. Why don't I just do that again? And then I was able to say, because I can't do anything else, you know, I'll stream Mm -hmm. Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Sunday. And being able to stick to that has been, you know, what's made it work for me. So, yeah, I would say that. That's good. Like, because... With, with like also I'm too and lucky to still have a job but unfortunately I don't work from home I'm here in the United States I'm what's considered an essential worker so throughout ever since the pandemic started I was leaving my house on a regular basis I had to go to my place of work and it, it was still stressful because I mean hearing my friends being st- staying at home I mean to be perfectly honest I was envious because I really like staying at home but then I thought about because I also started dabbling in streaming i want to say november of of last year when i moved houses or not, even before that i would stream around in july because i was actually homesick with COVID. i actually got it oh. and luckily it was very mild and we didn't have to go to the hospital or anything I, it, it was just like a weekend and then i was fine but when i was at home i was streaming and i was doing stuff like that i was uh, streaming fall guys and we had the one person who was watching me and yes that was a good high that was a good um that was like a good emotional high or maybe like a little ego boost or maybe not ego boost but like a self confidence booster that this one person was willing to watch me play fall guys for two and a half hours <laughs> that was awesome he saw me win my first ever crown I never won a crown before. And then until he started watching me play and then like an hour in, I get my first win. <laughs> and it was like, man, like doing this is fun. Just having someone talk to is fun. Cause I have done streams where I'm like only talking to where I'm talking to no people. And mm. it kind of, even though I have a theater background from when I was in high school and college or uni, as it's called in Australia, <laughs> um, it, I, you do better when you're able to work off of someone. Like yeah, if I'm yeah. just like speaking to the void, mm. it's like, hmm, this just feels awkward. But as long as like there's there's one person there, then it's like, yeah, maybe I can't I can do this. Yeah. Um, if I could give one tip for people who mm-hmm. are streaming, um, even if you don't have any viewers, one thing I've always kept in mind, or if your chat's very quiet, you have nothing to go off is um to pretend that you're recording a youtube video Mm -hmm. um and and do that commentary like you would um as if you were recording the content and that i've found has really helped me to you know stay upbeat and engaging so that when people do come in they have something to engage with Mm -hmm. um because you don't you don't want to come in to a stream and you know have nothing to say because right. the stream is not really doing anything so i found that really really helpful yeah actually i wish i knew that beforehand because <laughs> um besides theater i also had um i also took um classes in college for for radio that was my major when i was at my um, university 
and a trick says is a trick they said like when you first get in behind a booth and you first have a microphone in your face it's really hard because you're when you're on the air you're talking to thousands of maybe hun- or hundreds of people maybe thousands of people but you want to refer to them as like just one single person you don't try to say all of you i mean sometimes you can say yeah all of you can do this but you mostly want to just address one person yeah. so a trick is to like maybe bring like a toy or a picture or what i did i brought a, a little superman action figure and that was my <laughs> talking point like i had it up on top of the board and i would like be doing the technical stuff but once i turned my microphone on i would be talking to that mm. like like say if like um like kind of like what we're doing now i'm talking to you this is an easy this this is where our conversation we're having except the only difference would be you wouldn't be talking back to me so that's actually that's a good way to put it. I'll have to remember that next time. Um, any other tips for streaming that you have? Um, I wouldn't call myself an accomplished streamer, but I think you have to just kind of dive in and mm-hmm. you know, don't worry too much about having everything perfect and ready to go. All mm-hmm. you have to really worry about is being welcoming and as engaging as you can be. Um and then yeah, you'll you'll find your community. It took me a long time to yeah. to find a community that that I clicked with, um, and I was very lucky to actually find that through Twitter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, we the Twitter community that that you and you and I are a part of, Ben, is is super welcoming and super friendly. Um, and as long as you're trying to give that same energy back to your community, then you'll do well. I feel like there should be like a little dinger and accounting and like a little ticker that pops up every time I mention the Twitter community that you and I are part of. Cause almost every single person I've had on the show is from the Twitter community that we're, we're in. <laughs> and for the foreseeable, foreseeable future, every guest on the show or almost every guest on the show is going to be from that community because so, so because now, cause before I would like, I had, maybe like a hundred, less than a hundred followers on Twitter when I started the podcast, Fake Nerds, and I'm doing this. And I want to say it was maybe Sega Master Tim who first started doing the Follow Fridays that I got, mm. that I got like part of, like I remember I opened up Twitter one day and I'm like, why do I have 20 notifications? I only have like one in the span of a week mm. or in the span of three weeks, I only have like maybe one. And he must have found one gaming post that I put up. He's like, hey, this guy seems cool. I'm going to put him in my Fall Friday. I'm like, I don't know what the heck Fall Friday is. And all of a sudden, I went from like maybe 50 Twitter followers to 100 and slowly but surely growing. Mm. So I have the exact same experience with Follow Friday, which <laughs> I think is so, so funny. So it was since Spacey's who uh, yeah. put me in his in his first Follow Friday and through his Follow Friday, um, somehow I made my way over to um, a, another Australian streamer called um, Paulie Kwan, and uh, Paulie. I jumped in. I jumped into one of Paulie's streams, and the community that he had just made my heart swell. I was that like, "These!" <laughs> Shout out to Paulie. Um, I, I always credit, you know, my streaming back to Paulie and Spacey's. Um, because I found Paulie's community and I saw how he interacted with them and I thought, I want to do that. That's the kind of streamer that I want to be. And I know that Paulie says a similar thing about me. I think we found each other mm-hmm. at, a, at a really pivotal point in our streaming careers. But um, I do have to admit that I still don't really know how to use Twitter. <laughs> I'm, I'm very bad oh. at, at using Twitter, um, but I'm, I'm trying to get back to it. I'm trying to... I'm trying to learn how to so that I can give back to that community because I've gotten so much from them. Yeah, Ali, you are absolutely not the only one because I'm in the same boat. Um, <laughs> for like when I was in college and when I was doing radio, and they said like, yeah, you have to have a social media presence because I feel especially for like for streaming or for for me because I use Twitter mostly as a tool to to reach out to like, hey, do you want to be on my podcast? Like you are. Or, hey, can you please read my articles and give me feedback? I need some feedback because I want that to eventually be my 9 to 5 job. Do I want this to be my 9 to 5 job? Of course I do. But I'm doing this now because I love it. But using Twitter and getting an audience is like 
one of the hardest things. But at the same time, I've now fallen into a community. I'm making friends now. Like if I'm yeah, ever in yeah. Sydney, Australia, you're the first person I'm hitting up. It's like, hey, I'm in Australia. I'm I'm going to Australia. Where should we go? Or if I go to Brisbane, sure. or or when I go to Brisbane, where Todd lives, I'm going to hit him up. It's like, yo, I'm in Brisbane. Let's let's do something. The same thing when I go to England and I or I go to Europe. I and all our friends out there. It's like, hey, I'm in this, I'm in your area. Let's let's go. And of course, the same thing when you ever if you ever come up to the United States, hit me up. I got some great retro gaming spots we can go to. It's going to be fun. So even though I'm using Twitter, like using Twitter as a tool, because I also don't know how to use Twitter 100 percent fully. Like <laughs> when I'm trying to tag everyone I know of, like let them know that I have a new article up, mm. I'm doing it one by one <laughs> instead of trying to find like the math like button to click is like how can i just like drag all their names into one thing and then just like do a thing and like boom it all gets goes to them i did have a think about that when you mentioned it um can you just copy and paste everybody's everybody's does that not work i want to say yes but i remember um uh, cindy jacks she said that you can um like mass at people and it's through a thing called a list and I think I did actually set what set one up once, and I just still don't know how to use it properly. <laughs> because I will fully admit, I mean, if you go to my Twitter profile, if you go to my bio, it says I've been on Twitter since like 2010, maybe 2009. I was in high school in 2009. I was just graduating high school, totally aging myself right now. I don't care. I'm 30 years old. <laughs> who I turned 31 in a few months, but I didn't know how to use Twitter back then. Mm -hmm. And then I just never touched it. And all of a sudden there's so many new things to, uh, that Twitter is used for nowadays. And I'm just sitting there going like, when the hell did I get so old? <laughs> it's like looking at a, uh, looking at my phone is like, I should be able to know how to use this. Cause it was around when I was a kid and I never touched it. It's like, I feel what? exactly the same. <laughs> it's, it's kind of like, um, I will never forget this one Christmas, like my mother's side of the family is from Montana. Um, Montana is a very like, it's, it's very conservative, but it's also a very outdoorsy state. Um, I would joke, and I'm pretty sure this is true. There's a higher deer population than a human population in that whole entire state. But it's very like, if you're an outdoorsy person, it's absolutely beautiful. Would definitely recommend to go visit. If you're a huge fan of hiking, if you love going on trails, definitely go. Um, we were there for Christmas one year and it was a huge family gathering. Um, we were all crammed in this house. And of course, being, I was like a teenager, I was in high school. Um, everyone was talking and my brother and I were just in our own little corner. And I was like, I'm gonna pop my iPod in. I had my old iPod. I popped my headphones in and one of my second cousins, who's quite a bit older than I am, comes over to me, taps me on the shoulders. Like, what's that? And I'm like, it's an iPod. What's an iPod? are you serious right now? He's like, yeah, what is that? I'm like, it's, it's an MP3 player. What's an MP3 player? I'm like, are you freaking serious right now? <laughs> and I'm explaining him what an iPod is. Cause I had like an old iPod mini. This is like when it was like the, the dots, like the black and white dot screen. You remember that? Like the mm, first generation yep. iPod minis, it was that. Yep. Um, it's not like these monstrosities that we have now. <laughs> Where, and I'm telling him, I was like, yeah, you can like have like 10,000 songs on this one device. He's like, 10,000 songs? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, how many do you have? I'm like, not enough. <laughs> <laughs> not even close to that. And he was talking about it. He's like, oh, do you have any country on there? And this was back when I was very anti country music. I'm like, nope, just, um, I'm listening to Led Zeppelin right now. You want to listen to Stairway to Heaven? He's like, I don't think I've ever listened to Stairway to Heaven. I'm like, how have you not listened to Stairway to Heaven yet, Scott? <laughs> Yeah, I've always been a very um, early adopter of technology and it's always fun sharing that with people who just have no idea, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, especially with like VR technology. Mm. So I don't, I ordered my first VR this Ooh. week and I'm very excited, but um, I have had access to my brother's VR for quite a okay. few years now and introducing my friends to Beat Saber has got to be one of the funniest <laughs> funniest um introductions to the new technology that I've, see, I've ever seen you didn't see my instagram story when i was in miami did you i think i did 
If you play Beat Saber? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I was just about to say, um, like when you say, because also my brother, he's also a big technology guy as well. He's also into music. He has his own music studio in his um, apartment. But when we went to go visit him and he said, yeah, I have a PlayStation VR. I'm like, no, you don't. He busted the headset out. It's like, you want to play? I'm like, fuck yeah, I want to play. And we, and the first game we played was Beat Saber. And that was the first time I ever experienced anything in VR because I'm not going to lie. When I see VR, I'm thinking, okay, this is the future. But at the same time, I'm still, I don't want to be like the grumpy old man who's like stuck in my ways, but I'm more comfortable playing a video game with a controller in my hands and the action going on the TV screen. Yeah. Um, I'm still, con- I'm still comfortable with that. And I don't see like a lot of the stuff that was coming out for VR, like um, Beat Saber. Um, I know Resident Evil 7 was a, had a big proponent of VR, but a lot of the earlier VR games um, like Batman VR, Elder Scrolls VR, they weren't as good. They weren't, mm. it wasn't well received. So I'm like, you know what? I'll just give time. I'll wait. Cause everyone's saying like the best way to play VR is with the Oculus. And that's like $1,600. And I, and you have to like have a high end PC to run it properly. You have to have all the, the highest specs. And I'm like, I don't have that kind of money. I'm just going to stay with my console. Thank you very much. Mm. But playing PSVR for the very first time with Beat Saber, it truly is like, I'm in a whole nother world. It's just you, the the Beat Sabers, the thing, and the music just blaring in your headset. And I cannot tell you how much fun that was playing that for the first time. We, I am like bummed that I never really got into it. So after I get my PlayStation 5, I'm probably going to invest in the PlayStation 5 VR because the newer one's coming out soon. Mm-hmm. I'm going to invest in that. I'm going to get Beat Saber. And I, instead of watching my girlfriend come home to Pokemon Snap, she's probably going to be playing Beat Saber because that's what she was doing. <laughs> the first time I played Beat Saber, I played it so much that the next day my arms and shoulders were as sore as if I'd spent an hour and a half in the gym doing weights the day before. <laughs> um, <That's>... And <laughs> I absolutely adore rhythm games. I'd have to say... if if I had to pick one genre of video games that I like the most, it would Mm -hmm. actually probably be rhythm games. So stepping into Beat Saber for the first time was like an absolute dream come true to be inside of a game um, like, you know, Guitar Hero, Tetris Effect Connected, um, which has an amazing soundtrack. A new game that I've been playing called um, Everhood is also one of those games that's like really immersive with the music. Mm-hmm. Um, and music is really like transportive yeah. for me. Um, so yeah, Beat Saber was like the ultimate gaming experience for me. I adore that game. I bought the VR just so I could play it because my brother took his back. No. <laughs> Dang. No, when we were there and we were playing Beat Saber on his VR, we were just having an absolute blast. Like my brother and I, we went, um, so his girlfriend went to bed and then my brother and I goes into, we went to the studio to do a little something, something. And Fanny was just playing Beat Saber for hours on end. Like she was trying <laughs> to get to, cause we would go from easy to medium and to hard. Mm. And since my brother is very musically inclined, like when we first got Guitar Hero, he went from medium to hard to expert in almost the span of like a month and a half maybe less than that. Whereas me, who isn't the best musically inclined, I mean, I was in choir for high school, but that's not much, but I would only play Guitar Hero a medium. (laughs) Like that's as far as I went. Cause when I would play Guitar Hero, I would play cause like, hey, I don't have this song on my iPod yet. I want to listen to like Stevie Ray Vaughan. I want to listen to um, In Flames, all these, all these bands that I Mm. love, but I just don't have the music to yet. And I'm like, I'm just gonna just, playing guitar hero yeah i think i started playing guitar hero and as i say that i realize i have a guitar (laughs) hero controller behind me um i think i would have been in year year five or year six and it was around the time that i was also learning how to play violin Um, and I remember going to violin practice and my teacher was like you haven't practiced at all this week have you and I said no I've been playing guitar hero but at least I'm an expert (laughs) 
<laughs> you were playing violin, and then you go in, your teacher's like, you haven't been playing. Oh, that is <laughs> Have not been practicing. But actually, that reminds me of maybe it would probably be the first time that I ever played a game in front of an audience um, mm -hmm. was when Guitar Hero came out. And you know how it, you know, stores, they have the setup where you can yeah. demo the game in the store. Oh, yeah. Um, and I was waiting for my brother to finish work when we were picking him up. And I picked mm -hmm. up the Guitar Hero demo and started playing on Expert. And, yeah, I would have been maybe – 12 or 13 at the time just absolutely shredding on expert and by the time i finished the song i had a group of people around me going oh my gosh she's really good <laughs> so maybe at that point i should have thought maybe i should play games for people <laughs> yeah well well so one of the things about streaming that um because i'm assuming you're you're a bit younger than i am because you, you were like 12 13 well, how old was was i went to okay I'm assuming you're a little bit younger than I am. I'm a couple of years younger than you, not too much. Yeah, okay. But um, seeing you being able to stream like you are, um, or even not not just you, but others, uh, other streamers, because for me growing up, I unfortunately do remember a time when my parents were, I mean, once again, my parents are not anti-video games, far from it, but they also mm -hmm. were, they were practical. They were um, I don't want to say they were realists, but they wanted me to think realistically. Mm. Like if I were to tell them that in the future people could play video games and other people watch them and then give them money, they would have called me a liar and said, there's no way. Cause there have been times where my parents have said, you're not going to get a job playing video games all day. Mm -hmm. And now seeing people who are streaming, like they're showing stuff on YouTube and they are playing video games all day, making a very, a much better living than I am kind of makes me a little mad <laughs> i'm obviously not mad at you but mad at the fact that if because i also like you mentioned earlier like maybe you missed the boat maybe you waited too long because exactly, now yeah. i am very much in that where i feel like should i even try streaming because i feel that and i mean i don't know this is going to sound ageist or anything if that's a that yeah that's a thing is if i'm too old to be streaming and then i see other people who are streaming that are I can only assume they're a lot older than me and they're doing mm. just fine. Yeah. So it's like, it isn't too late. I just need to just go at it. No, it's, it's definitely not too late. Um, and, you know, I've had that feeling, especially being a woman in gaming, you know, when I was growing up, there was more of a stigma around women playing games than mm. there is now. I've definitely seen, you know, a hundredfold improvement in that kind of sense, but also just, generally in society you know a women's a woman's worth mm -hmm. um as you get older and then also in the video game space um i think made me feel quite like am i too old for streaming um i should have gotten into it when i was you know in my early mm -hmm. 20s and where would i be now but um as long as you're streaming for you know your enjoyment as long as you like it and you want to do it then no, it's it's not too late because it's got nothing to do with your age, whether you have fun, whether you engage with um with a really really fun community. Yeah. Um, speaking of being a woman streamer, um, I would like to talk about that a little bit, if that's okay with you. Yeah, sure. Um, now I do recognize the stigma of women in games, which I'm so glad that that's not getting to not be a thing anymore. Um, because like. Well, growing up for me, just finding, like, hearing that, because, sorry, I'm trying to get my words straight. I don't, because <laughs> I tend to ramble, and I tend to go from one point to another. I'm trying not to do that. Um, but I would remember that when I would, especially back when I was younger, um, especially in middle school, specific, specifically, talking to another girl about playing video games was a taboo subject. Mm. And when I got into high school, thankfully, it's like, yes, girls play games. Deal with it. Yeah. And I was like, yes, let me talk to these girls who play games. Because not only do I have someone else to talk to, but also I know someone else who likes the same games I do. Because a lot of friend circles I was in, they were into the very popular ones. The the dude bro games. Like, you can <laughs> say, like, if you said you play video games um, for me when I was in middle, uh, high school, 
it, it depended on what type of game you could, were playing. If you're playing the popular ones like Grand Theft Auto, Call of Duty, Halo, the shooters that you were like, okay, yeah, the cool kids play that. But for me, I was playing Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts. I was going back into, I was playing older retro games on my PlayStation 1. Then you're seen as, oh, you're the nerd. You're uncool. Yeah. You're unfit to you go over there, nerd. Shoot. <laughs> so um, what has been your, ex after that whole long rambling story, <laughs> apologies, um, what has been your experience in the beginning of your streaming career and then what's like now as being a woman in a woman streamer playing video games? I think ultimately I've been very lucky to immediately find um, the community that I have, which I know I keep going on about it, but they're mm -hmm. so amazing and welcoming um, that I haven't really had what I feared which was the harassment that a lot of female streamers get. Right. Um, and I've also been lucky to find a community that's quite equal in, um, in mm -hmm. gender um, and, you know, welcoming to any kind of gender. Um, so I, f I found that a lot of my fears were rooted in the experiences that I had growing up as a gamer um which was a lot of like oh you don't play these games so you're not a real gamer or exactly, you know yeah. you're a fake gamer you're just doing it you're just saying you play games for attention like I got a lot of that in high school <laughs> so yeah, um there because I do remember seeing like pictures of of girls like um let's call them Instagram models of taking of their scantily clad they're they're showing a lot of skin and they have a controller in their hands maybe the, the cord is going through their mouth or something you know trying to look sexy and mm. not that there's anything wrong with that but they're saying it's like oh i'm playing a game it's like and then you get unfortunately the gatekeepers who are like well what game are you playing and then they call them out for it. it's like look if you have you're making content you're making content that's your if you want to make that type of content go for it mm -hmm. but just like calling out people saying oh you don't play games is like why are you doing this is to me i still say it's wrong because mm -hmm. even if like the like um exhibit a the sexy instagram model wants to take pictures to appeal to gamers okay and then they the gamers find out that she doesn't play games it's like she's still appealing to you in a, some form some way if that mm -hmm. if that bloody makes sense and then when there's also nothing like mutually exclusive about being sexy right. and playing games. Yeah, you can do not. both or neither. <laughs> yeah, and, or I would also like in like in my head canon, she turns around and is like, yeah, I I've, I've been playing Final Fantasy since I was a little girl. I love I love playing video games. I have a decent collection. And then it's like, oh, but you don't play this game, so you're still not a real gamer. I, I feel that a lot of unfortunately a lot of men, a lot of boys, or whatever you want to call them we'll still try to find a way because unfortunately this hobby of ours has been male dominated for mm. years yeah and seeing and seeing more ladies play video games like i still cannot tell you how happy it makes me when i come home i see my girlfriend playing games or we're at the store together and she's like man i really cannot wait for this game to come out i'm like yeah neither can i or even times where she's on the switch and i'm playing ps4 and we're just just chilling playing video games together yeah and i think streaming has actually had a very positive influence on the perception of women in gaming because this is a platform where we can be visible and mm -hmm. say yes we do play games we play the same games and we're also quite good at them yeah um which is you know there's that that scale of like you don't play games you don't play the right games or you're bad at games I mean, you kicked my ass in Mario Kart that one time. That really, <laughs> it didn't piss me off because you're a woman. You um, beat me. It pissed me off that because I was practicing all day. <laughs> I was actually racing with Fanny, playing 150 CCs, trying to get good. And then you just come, you just swoop in and throw and throw that bloody red shell at the last second. I know it was you too. There's a lot of there's a lot of shell sniping and colluding. <laughs> <laughs> Although I, did, I forgot who it was, but I did get a really good green shell shot, like straight on too. Yes. That's like my very, 
very best friend in the world, Jess, often joins Mario Kart and she is known in my stream as the Green Shell Sniper. Oh. Make sure I'm very far away from her then. <laughs> <laughs> no, She'll my, get you. <laughs> oh, I bet she will. Um, re really quick story since we're talking about Mario Kart. My best friend, when I got Mario, I got Mario Kart Wii before he did. And he, my best friend from high school, he is act in real life too. He is a licensed race car driver. He has a racing license, so he can drive race cars for a living. He knows how, what to do. And he's, mm -hmm. and we've been racing go-karts together when we were in high school. He would take me to his favorite indoor go-kart track and we'd race, and he would teach me how to be a better racer. Um, so, of course, once I get Mario Kart Wii, I invite him over, and he doesn't have the game yet. So I'm thinking, oh, this is the one time I'm able to beat him. <laughs> Our very first race together, we're on Luigi's Circuit, easiest track in the whole game. Mm -hmm. And I am like so far ahead of him. But what this little bastard has, he had a blue shell. <laughs> and he waited to the perfect moment, which was right before I crossed the finish line. He timed it perfectly. It hits me. And right as my as I'm done like moving around, he zooms past me and beats me. <laughs> Mario Kart is one of those games where I've found... It's actually very hard to be mad when something like that happens to you because oh, it's I so. <laughs> it's. I was, I was like, "Are you, are you kidding?" I was like, "How? Are you kidding?" He is laughing. My brother is watching that. As he's watching this, I turn around. He's on the floor, rolling around. <laughs> Because he just witnessed one of the funniest things the whole time. Because when I raced Mario Kart, even because back then it was a split screen uh, multiplayer, I yeah. wasn't screen watching. I was concentrating on my screen, trying to get my drifts right. And then he, all of a sudden I hear the beep, 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 beep. I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> and then it hits me. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> there are many clips on my stream of that exact, exact moment happening. So the the situation that bequeathed the title mm -hmm. green shell sniper um i was maybe this this far mm -hmm. from the finish line and the green shell sniper got me right from behind and then i finished eighth from first <laughs> that's how you make a serial killer I'm sorry, that's how serial killers get bored is when you are winning the whole time and all of a sudden you go from first day. Because I remember when we raced, and I do want to race with you guys again because that was so much fun. I had a blast. Um, of course, once again, time differences, they suck. Um, I think I was in like second or third place and I was doing very well. And all of a sudden I hit a boost by just getting my turn wrong. And then mm. I went from third to like 11th. <laughs> It's mad. an unforgiving game. It is extremely unforgiving. And we and you guys were you were like zipping past me. I'm like, oh man, because I even put in my Instagram story that day. I was like, I'm gonna show these Australians how us Americans play the cart. <laughs> I go to record the main podcast the next day. All three of my co-hosts were like, so Ben, did you show those Australians how us Americans play the cart? I'm like, God damn, I should have said <laughs> They were giving me shit the rest of the night. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I think it's uh, one of those games. Sorry, um, one of no. those games too where if you've never played online, your perception of whether you're good or not is oh. completely off. Oh, it is. Because when I, I, before I streamed it and I would just play with my friends, I was untouchable. I would be, you know, almost lapping my friends. Mm -hmm. And then the moment I started streaming and it caught the attention of some people who actually play Mario Kart competitively that's the moment i realized i had no idea what i was doing <laughs> yeah it's always that when you it, it, i feel like it's um like in your friend group or in your family because i have uh nieces and nephews um my, my youngest nephew i call him my clone because he also has my namesake and he's a huge video game fan like for christmas he got a mario onesie so <laughs> so um i remember him and also another nephew of mine they're saying it's like, oh yeah, I think we, I could be Uncle Ben at Smash Bros. I'm like, I'm gonna destroy <laughs> you, child. You take that back. Mm -hmm. Even um, their their mom, my sister, my stepsister, she's like, oh, I haven't played Smash Bros. in forever, but yeah, I'm still really good. I'm the best. I'm like, are you now? 
<laughs> we get online and the trash talking commences because I wipe her three stocks to nothing in Smash Bros. <laughs> Um, Smash Bros is one of those games that I refuse to play with anyone who's actually good at Smash Bros. So my partner loves Smash and he would play with his friends every single night. So they, they're very, very good. I will not play with them. <laughs> would you I will play only with... play with people who are not good at the game. Okay. So now once again, I have not played Smash Bros in a long time. I mean, would you play Smash Bros. with me if we had the chance? I'd do it because it's you. Okay. Not because I want to. Because no, if cause... you have if you have even a basic understanding of the combos in Smash, you will destroy me. <laughs> okay, maybe it's a better, better idea maybe not play. Because I have like three mains in Smash Bros. Ultimate that I'm like, I know how to use their combos. I know how to play with those characters. Mm. And it's um because even with um with fanny when we play together it's cool because there are times i win she wins i win she wins i win a few she wins a few so but you're you're absolutely right you don't know how good you are until you go online yeah like i think i tried going online for smash for a little bit and then i just got i was i got essentially my face was a mop <laughs> and I was, you wiped the floor i wiped the floor so i'm like i'm not doing that again <laughs> <laughs> oh, only play Smash online with people I know. I did have an idea for a stream where my partner would come on and teach me how to play Smash mm. on stream. And he was like, Ali, are you sure that's a good idea? <laughs> so we haven't done it yet, but I'm still I'm working on it. He's a little bit camera shy. Mm -hmm. He's he's only ever come on to play one or two games of Guitar Hero. But I think, okay. you know, as long as we don't, argue too much i think that would be quite a fun stream to do <laughs> well funny enough um now the first stream i did was cindy um it was her first fortnite stream now unfortunately we didn't have her ps4 set up so her audio was captured only my audio was caught hers wasn't but luckily for the second time around we fixed that um we played when i showed her how to play fortnite um I was essentially teaching her how to play the game as we played. And of course we were, it was battle Royale formation. It was two versus a hundred. It was two versus 98. We were on a team and I was showing her how to play. I was like, okay, you see this, this is how that works. This is how this works. And she was getting used to it. She was having fun. And then eventually she let me know that she got the battle pass and she plays Fortnite, maybe not on the regular, but she's willing to mm -hmm. play with it, play it more, more often. Because that's what uh, um, Sparks and Ryan did for me. Because I did try Fortnite right when it first came out. Didn't like it. Absolutely hated it. And I became the grumpy old man when I'd see these little kids <laughs> doing the stupid Fortnite dances. <laughs> like the flossing thing. I'm just like... <laughs> I'm afraid I still am one of those grumpy old men who <laughs> refuse to play Fortnite. I will. But you've almost convinced me. You have been very convincing in <laughs> in trying to get me to give it another go. Well, I will say this. I will is Fortnite for everyone? No. Have has uh, Epic Games improved Fortnite to the point where even if you don't win the battle royale, is there stuff for you to do? Yes. Um there's stuff to like there's quests to do, XP to gain things to unlock if you're a battle pass member. I mean, yeah, the battle pass is a whole thing because I'm still very anti-microtransactions, even though I'm part mm -hmm. of the Fortnite crew, which is a, a, like a $12 a month subscription. I mean, yes, I do get some cool perks. I get special skins that aren't available anywhere else. And, mm -hmm. excuse me, and I'm able to, and during the season, I'd be able to unlock more skins that you can only get if you're in the battle pass. Because like that's the whole thing about game in Fortnite is like you get these really cool skins and you can customize them all you want. But as I was playing it, when my friends told me like just just download it one more time, just give it a go, just play with us, you will you'll you'll see how it is. So I started playing with them again, and it's really fun. Mm. I was having an absolute blast. I mean, even there are times I play just by myself. I'm like just try to get my XP, just try to get as much XP as possible. And if I win a few rounds, cool. If I don't, <laughs> that's totally fine. So okay, if you... I think you've convinced me. <laughs> yes, I got another one. Another ding. <laughs> yeah, so now we just need to figure out a time to play because once 
I keep once again time take a shot every time I say time zones suck. <laughs> but yeah, it is definitely. I mean, if you don't like it, that's totally fine. I, I feel like another thing with um, like I don't know if it's mostly for streamers, but also with gamers that that's been going around recently. I've seen I've been seeing a lot of love online, especially on Twitter, where people have been saying, um, "If you don't like a game, that's fine. If mm. you have." an opinion of something that's different from someone else's that's fine just do not attack the person like say like you just said you don't fight like fortnite a dick move of me would be like huh, well of course you don't like fortnite you suck at video games it's like you <laughs> it's like if i were to say something like that and mean it then i would be an asshole and that's something mm. i do not want to be and um like you were saying earlier with being playing being a woman streaming you've been getting a lot of love and support of just like go and play a video game if you like it cool mm -hmm. if you don't that's fine I'm glad, exactly yeah yeah i'm glad we're moving away from the stigma of um your opinion if you don't if you have different opinions then you suck definitely yeah because i can definitely tell you there are times i was very scared about talking not talking bad but criticizing mario 64 which is a <laughs> beloved game and I know that Twitter can be like that sometimes. Yeah. Well, gaming is such a such a personal experience, I think, mm -hmm. that, you know, everyone reacts to things differently and is attracted to different things. And that's the beauty of gaming is that there's such a variety of games um, that you can really find anything. Um, and you don't have to worry about, you know, do I have to play the most popular game? Because that's something that, you do get a bit of pressure on streaming is oh, I have to play the game that's you know the most popular but there mm -hmm. are so many games out there that people love and have loved their experience and they want to share that experience with you um and I I just find that really nice yeah um I definitely have seen that because when Sam playing while I was playing Mario 64 people are like oh man that's such a good game you're loving it and I was happy so I was like yeah I am loving it like I love parts of the game, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, and one, the next game I'm going to tackle is, once again, Super Metroid. That game has been touted as one of, maybe not, if not the best game on the Super Nintendo. Like, rivaling Super Mario 64 and Mar and Final Fantasy 3, <clears throat> 6. It came out as <laughs> Final Fantasy 3 here in America. Once again, we're weird. Because mm. um, people have been saying that that's like the best Super Nintendo games ever, and I'm going to be playing for the first time but also I'm a little nervous because I feel that if this game has been too hyped up for me and after I play it, it doesn't live up to that hype. Did I experience the same thing? Cause unfortunately I never played that game when it was in its glory days. I am playing it over 30 years after the fact. Yeah. So it's, it's still a little nervous, but at the same time, I'm still excited because this is when you get a game like Mario 64, Super Metroid, or GoldenEye, or another game that people say this is a must-play for a system, and you've mm. never played it before, there's still that bit of excitement, like, man, I'm bummed I missed out on it, but now I actually get to experience it. Yeah, and you get that feeling of experiencing something that so many people have before you, and mm -hmm. you're part of that now. Yeah. Um yeah, so, I mean, once uh, I start playing Super Metroid, that's going to be... I'm looking forward to it. And You'll I'm have to gonna... tell me how it goes, because I oh, have I'm... never played a Metroid game. Ooh. Once again, <laughs> not for everyone, but I've definitely fallen hard for the Metroid games recently, because, I mean, Metroid Dread's coming out. That was just mm. the first new Metroid game we've had in over 19 years. Um, they are a little hard to find, but if you have a Wii U system... You're mm -hmm. able to download the Game Boy Advance games, which are Metroid Zero Mission, which is a remake of Metroid 1. Mm -hmm. And it's a very better version of Metroid 1, by the way, because <laughs> as much as I love 8-bit games, I absolutely adore 8-bit Nintendo. I love, I love, 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 love those the style and how those games are. Metroid's really a bit freaking hard. <laughs> the original Metroid is really a freaking hard. You don't know what to do. It's like, it's like, what? So yeah, Metroid Zero Mission and Metroid Fusion, which is the first Metro game I ever played or really ever owned, you can download them on the Wii U eShop. They're there. They're 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 you're good. If you have a Switch, Super Metroid is available on the any on the Super Nintendo. 
The only one you might have trouble getting is Samus Returns, which is the remake of Samus 2 for the Game Boy. Um, that might be the hard one. I would, If you do nab a copy of Samus Returns, definitely play that. Because once again, 8-Bit Metroid on a Game Boy system was... It was beloved. It's a really good game, but it's also really hard because it's like, where do I go? What do I do? <laughs> the fuck is this thing? So yeah, if you have a Wii U, Ali, I would highly recommend um, downloading Zero Mission, Fusion, and you have a Switch, so you're able... And you have the online thing, so you have you have three of the four. You're good. My biggest takeaway from from chatting to you, Ben, is just adding so many more games to my backlog. <laughs> yeah, I tend to do that. <laughs> Even talking with you, there are times it's like, oh yeah, that game. Oh uh, no, because I'm, I'm assuming if Sparks, because Sparks is probably going to listen uh, listen to this, and all the spooky games that you mentioned, like maybe Outlast. He's because pro- we're getting close to October. And now that we're, it's safer for us to record in person, we're going to do more base arcade. We're going to do more spooky base arcade, meaning I'm going to be playing a lot more horror games and I'm probably going to be screaming and getting the crap scared out of me. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Did, did you ever see the, I know I've kept asking you if you've seen my videos, I apologize. Um, but did I ever show you the video of me playing Resident Evil 7? I think you maybe sent it to me right when I started playing, so I was trying to avoid spoilers. Okay. Well, I've only played... So in that game, I've only got to the very beginning, but there's this one part... I got scared a lot in that game, and there's a part where I got scared by my own damn shadow. (laughs) I have been scared by my own footsteps in a game before. Oh, yeah, I've done that too. I'm like, I hear... (laughs) I'm like, what's that? What's that? Where'd that come from? Oh, my God. And of course, in that game, you have a gun, so you're like, oh, where, where, where? <laughs> All right, so Ali, thank you again so much for coming on and just rambling and talking with me. It's been an absolute blast. I, like I say with pretty much everyone else is on the show, open invite. If you ever want to come back on, just like chat about anything video game related, just hit me up. You have an open invite. I can definitely stay up till 4 a.m. again here in, here in California. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for having me. It's been so much fun. Of course. Now, Ali, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, so you can find me on Twitch at AliceIAU and on Instagram and Twitter, also at AliceIAU. And for clarification, Alisai is spelled A-L-Y-S-A-I. Because unfortunately, That's right. <laughs> um, I don't know how to, because if people watching us on YouTube, because normally our names are up and yeah. they're probably like, how, where the names go? I was trying to figure out how to get the names back because Brian switched it when we do, because when we all do the live show, we're all in one spot. There's no need to put our names up. So mm. whoops. <laughs> it's, it's definitely not his fault. He, if he's listening to this, Brian is not your fault. I'm the one who should have looked at this beforehand. But anyways, yes, you could find her on Twitch. Definitely give her a follow on Twitch. That's what I do. I love watching her every once in a while. Well, not every once in a while, whatever I can really. That sounds really nice. Wow. I got what you meant. (laughs) So yeah, definitely follow her on on Twitter and Instagram, all that jazz. You can find me personally at BenMagnet27 on Instagram and Twitter. And also, I do Twitch as well. Not as much as she does, but (laughs) sometimes. I believe my Twitch handle is BenMagnet, just capital B, capital M. If you can't find it there, just put 27 at the end. You'll find me there. You'll, You'll find it then. But I'm pretty sure for mine, it's just BenMagnet. Um, you can find the Mothership Show Fake Nerd Podcast, of course, here on YouTube. Um, we are still doing our we're still doing our live shows every Sunday evening here in the United States. So for Allie, that would be Monday afternoon for you. Nice. <laughs> yeah, so we're still doing our live shows. Um, uh, when this comes out, we would have uh, actually I don't know what episode we're doing because this is going to come out a while after recording. So yeah, check us out there. Um, also, if you want to support us, we have a whole bunch of cool stuff. We have a website, fakenerdpodcast.com. Uh, links to our Patreon are there. Links to our um, T Public are there, so you can get some cool shirts that we have. Um, also, since we're still in the middle of a pandemic, um, we have Crafted by Z masks. I believe the link to her mask with our with the Fake Nerd Podcast logo on them is on that is on that website. And also check out our shows. We have the Mothership Show. We have the regular Let's Play. That's YouTube only, but Base Marricade. That's the namesake of this show came from that. So check out Base Marricade. Go back to when I was playing uh, Spooky Games a few years ago. See me 
get scared playing Evil Within, especially when I went through the freaking meat grinder. I was like, this is a goddamn meat grinder. Why am I in here? <laughs> yeah, that was really scary. But then, of course, once I get the, the crossbow, ooh, ooh, I was having fun. Mm -hmm. The Agony crossbow is such a good gun. Game changer. Oh, totally. And of course, we're going through the Mortal, we're going through Mortal Kombat 10 right now. So definitely check out those videos when if they are up, cool. If not, then they will be up. And we have a bunch of other shows. We have Fake Nerd Book Club where we sit down and talk about comic books. That's on hiatus as of right now, but it'll be coming back soon. And check out the show Conversation. I was on a most a recent episode of that talking about how I got into fandom and that and I get a little I get pretty real there. So definitely go ahead and check that out. It was a great conversation. So Ali, once again, thank you so much for coming on and just talking. It was so good. Thanks for having me. Of course. And for now, let us unpause. <laughs>